Hello everyone, welcome to the Narc Survivor YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how the narcissist will make you think you're the problem. Please give the video a thumbs up down below. Hit subscribe and click all notifications so that you will be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. The narcissist will make you think you're the problem. They want you to think and feel like you are a villain. And you may feel this way because they don't always show what they're really like. They don't always reveal their true nature and character. They wear a mask because they don't always want you to see them as a bad person. Sometimes they may be seeking admiration or they may be trying to get you to let your guard down so that they can further exploit you. But then other times they will say or do things behind the scenes without most people knowing about it. Or they will act like they're role playing. They will treat it as a game. As though it's not something that should be taken seriously to absolve themselves of shame and obligation. So that if you ever dare to confront or expose them, they can then act like they don't know what you're talking about or they can shift the blame onto you, which then makes you feel isolated, as though you're the only one who knows. Or as though other people just don't care about it or treat it with the attention that it deserves, which may leave you feeling like you're the problem it may leave you feeling like you must be doing something to cause them to behave in this way. And they will do everything they can to convince you that it is you that's the problem and not them. But it's because they have a lot of difficulty dealing with their shame. So they're trying to deflect their shame onto you because they do not want to look at themselves. They want nothing to do with themselves, which is why they're so judgmental of you because they want to put their shame onto you. It's a form of projection. And they are masters at doing this because they've been doing it for a very long time. And because they're constantly pressuring you, you may often make mistakes. You may often do things that are out of character for you because they will deliberately trigger you and cause you to become emotional. They will try to make you angry because they want you to react. And when you do react, they will shame you because they want to put the blame onto you so that they can feel faultless and flawless as though they never did anything wrong. Because if you confront them, they're not going to hold themselves accountable. They're not going to respond to anything that you're accusing them of. They're going to act like they don't know what you're talking about because they don't want to be held accountable for themselves. They don't want anything to do with themselves. And when they're trying to blame and shame you, they will only focus on one particular moment. They won't look at what happened beforehand. They won't consider anything that might have caused you to react in that way. And instead, they will demonize you because they have a black and white mentality. So they see people as either all good or all bad, even if they were the cause of it, because they're not going to see themselves as all bad. So even if you made a small mistake, that mistake has to define you and it cannot reveal any shortcomings about themselves because they only think in black and white. So you have to be all bad so that they can see themselves as all good. And they will make sure that you feel bad about yourself, even if they were the ones who were at fault. And even if they deliberately orchestrated a situation to get a reaction out of you. In their mind, that's still your fault because you reacted. But even if you don't react, they can still twist it to paint you as the problem, as though you weren't attentive or responding in a responsible way. So they will set you up in these double binds. 
in these damned if you do, damned if you don't scenarios. Because they already have an objective in mind. They want to rid themselves of shame and paint you as the problem. So they will do anything they can to manufacture a situation where this appears to be the case. And because it's premeditated, there's very little you can do about it. Because no matter how you react, they can dissociate from their actions whenever they choose to and act like you are the crazy one. So there's really no winning with narcissists. The longer that you are around them, the more ammunition they will have against you and the more issues and problems they will accumulate, which you are expected to take accountability for. So it's one step forward, two steps back with narcissists. They will make you dig your own grave. And once you're in it, they will make it very difficult for you to climb back out because they want to keep you there. They want you to continuously internalize their external shaming of you. Regardless of what they may have done or anything that may have happened, they want you to feel bad. They want you to retreat. They want you to blame and criticize yourself for things you haven't even done. They want you to take the fall for them. They want you to accept the punishment for their wrongdoing, which is why they will shift the blame onto you and they will gaslight you, regardless of what they may have done wrong. They will make you think that it never happened, as though you didn't see what you saw, or the evidence wasn't there, or it wasn't substantial enough to support your claim. And they will blame and shame you. They will accuse you of being a bad person for accusing them of doing something wrong. They may ask you why you're so jealous or paranoid because they're being defensive. They're trying to protect themselves from being exposed. And it just reveals how arrogant and audacious they are to be secretly doing all of these things that they're being accused of, but turning it on you and blaming and shaming you for confronting them on their behavior. They have a selective memory because they dissociate from all of the bad things that they have done. They tune it out and they expect you to do the same. They will betray you. And then if you decide to give them another chance, in their minds, that means that all of the things they did should be forgotten. And they should have a record that shows no marks of discredit or dishonor, which is not how it works. Because betrayal is a very serious thing. It cannot be easily forgotten. And even when you notice that they're repeating the same patterns of behavior again, if you bring up the past, they will criticize and shame you and make it seem like you're just bitter and that you can't let go of the past when really you're just feeling dulled, tired and exhausted. You're lacking interest and enthusiasm because you've seen, done and heard enough to not be surprised or interested easily. After having the same things thrown in your face again and again to where they constantly reject you in a spiteful manner and they repay any acts of kindness with even more disappointment or betrayal. But despite that, you may actually take a moment to self-reflect and it may cause you to take back your opinions of them that they are strongly opposed to when you were actually on the correct path to begin with. The narcissist will make unreasonable demands or requests but they will cause you to wrongly believe that it is fair and reasonable. They will beat you down emotionally to the point where you can't even think straight. And you may know that eventually you will get better, but in the moment it feels like you're dying. So you just want to go and take some time to yourself to recover. But then the narcissist returns to you and you may be expecting that they will protect you and provide the things that you need and to have some compassion for what you may be going through. But instead, they see that you're feeling weak and vulnerable 
and they see it as a good time to be intimate. So they will forcefully persuade and direct you to be intimate with them. And you will keep turning them down. Which will seem so strange and unfamiliar. Because why would anyone make that type of request when you're emotionally exhausted and then keep pushing you to the point where they could not push it any further without physically restraining you and forcing you to be intimate with them. But the more that you reject their sexual advances, the more irritated and offended they will become to the point where it then becomes an argument where you're then left trying to defend your own interests until finally you may just end up giving in to what they want after refusing for a period of time. But it's only because it may appear to require less effort and to present less difficulties. And by that point, you haven't even got the energy anymore to make a decision or to display resolve. So you just give in in the hopes that it will then end the argument and then they will forget about it for a while. But even if you give in, it sends a message to the narcissist. It tells them that they can push to get anything they want whenever they want it and that you even approve of their behaviour. So even when your mental clarity returns and you're more focused, and your perception is clear, you can't bring it up again because they will just tell you that you need to take accountability for your own actions. But when you finally leave the relationship and you reveal all of the things that they caused you to accept as normal, it is shocking and difficult to imagine. The narcissist will make you look like the antagonist. If you've ever expressed anything to them about someone who may have irritated you, they will make it seem like you wish to cause this person trouble or pain. They will exaggerate or twist your words, or they will share private information that you disclose to them, which they really shouldn't be sharing with anyone to make it seem like you're the person who's mean so that this other person develops a different opinion of you because they want to paint this picture of you being the problem, which is why they will manage and direct events and people's actions from behind the scenes to get you to react in anger or in ways that you're not proud of in front of other people so that it makes it appear that you are the abusive one when really the narcissist is influencing other people's perceptions of you and they know exactly what they are doing. They are deliberately causing you to react in a certain way in front of other people. They are baiting you into an argument by talking about things that are triggering to you while acting as though they didn't know it was going to upset you. And to everyone else, it may appear as though this is the only, only the first time that you've encountered this issue with them. But you may have experienced this issue with them 100 times. To the point where when you react, it will look like you are overreacting. As though you have no compassion for them. When they just made a mistake. And then it may even make you feel like you're the problem. To where you then have to change or improve something for a person who is a permanent victim. Because, but, but, but they're not playing the victim because they want sympathy. They're playing the victim to cause other people to feel like they are being abused by you. So that those other people will then pity the narcissist and further abuse you, which is supply for a narcissist. So they will always be the victim and they may even run a smear campaign to cause other people to act in ways that are abusive to you. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. 
if you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.